In this video, I will show you how to fix account numbers in your chart of accounts. This video is for QuickBooks desktop users. QuickBooks Pro, Premier, Enterprise users will be able to use this feature. QuickBooks Online users will not. Hi, my name is Hector Garcia. I am a CPA and an advanced QuickBooks Pro advisor. I teach, sell, and consult QuickBooks for a living. So if you need to get a hold of me or my team, there's my phone number and my email. Quick warning, this video is a little bit advanced. So if you're looking for a more basic intermediate type of training, I suggest you check out my website, www.quickbooksacademy.com and purchase the three-day self-paced video-based QuickBooks desktop course. At the end of the video, I will show you how that works and also give you a coupon code just in case you're interested. Okay, on to the presentation. So what we're trying to do essentially is change a whole bunch of account numbers in batch because maybe you have the wrong account numbers in there or maybe you don't have any numbers at all. So let me show you. I'm on QuickBooks Desktop now. I'm gonna click on the List menu and then Chart of Accounts. And you're gonna notice that all the accounts have a number associated with it. Now these numbers happen to be all over the place. I messed it up kind of on purpose just to kind of show you. And none of these numbers have sort of rhyme or reason in terms of why they have those specific numbers. So one of the common questions I get from my clients is, how can I clean up all those account numbers all in one shot, maybe using Excel or something like that? And that's what I'm about to show you. Now, before we do that, if we click on the edit menu and click on preferences, and then click on accounting, and then company preferences, there's a little checkbox here that says use account numbers. If we turn that off and then hit OK, all the account numbers will disappear. They will be in the internal memory of QuickBooks, but they're not going to be physically shown. Now, the difference between having account numbers and not having account numbers typically has to do with presentation. You can also use the account numbers to sort the accounts in a non-alphabetical fashion. Numbers also allow for quick data entry. For example, let's say, for example, I'm writing a check and I'm not 100% sure of which account I should use, but I happen to have memorized the account number. Now, this is only really useful for people that have a really standard numbering system and are much better at memorizing numbers than words. For example, if I know I'm looking for license and permits without account numbers, all I do is type LI and it will show up. Now, if I happen to have a account numbers turned on, so let's change that to the account numbers turned on real quick. When I'm choosing account, the same account, like license and permits, I could simply just type 4657 and get there. Now, that's an advantage because I can type LIC, get there, or I can type 4657 and get there. So it's really up to you on whether you can use the account numbers specifically for data entry or not. But where they play the most or the biggest impact, it's going to be in the financial statements. So when you look at a profit and loss report with account numbers turned on or a balance sheet, you're going to see those leading account numbers next to each account. Now I'm going to hit collapse up here. And you're going to notice that the accounts are currently in alphabetical format. If I click on the list menu and click on chart of accounts, and then I click on account, resort list, and hit OK, the list will actually now be resorted based on account number. So if I go back to my profit and loss report, you will notice that this will no longer have alphabetical order. This actually has an ascending numerical order. So the account numbers do play a very interesting role on the way you could potentially organize your chart of accounts. Now, how could I go into the chart of accounts and change the account numbers? Well, the standard way of doing it, it's one by one. So let's say, for example, that I want all my bank accounts to start with one zero zero, and then we'll add a one, a two, a three, and a four in that sequence. So I would actually right click on the account, click on edit, and then I would change it here by typing one zero zero one. Then I hit save and close. Then I right click on the next one and then do one zero zero two up here in the, in the top right and then hit save and close. And that's how we do it manually. But I'm going to show you how to do this in batch by using Excel. 
but it's important to understand the premise. Like, why do we want to count numbers and why they play an important role? So I wanted to show you that piece first. So what we're going to do is we're going to export this chart of accounts. We're going to click on File, Utilities, Export, List to IIF. Then we're going to click on Chart of Accounts and OK. And then we're going to save this as Chart. I'm going to save it right here in my desktop. Hit Save. Click OK. Go ahead and minimize QuickBooks. Now I will notice a file on my desktop here called chart.iif, which is a IIF file, a special file that only QuickBooks really uses that actually contains that exact chart of accounts. Now you can't double click on that file and expect it to open in Excel because it is programmed to only work in QuickBooks. So if you wanted to change the information in that file, you would have to open Microsoft Excel separately, open a blank workbook, and then what you do is you grab this, this icon, whatever you may have it on the desktop, and you click and drag it onto a blank workbook. You let go of the mouse. You're going to notice that Excel is going to open up a brand new workbook with, the, with some data in it, and that's actually the data in the IAF file. I can close the blank workbook I have and then just work on this one. So let's kind of analyze how this IAF file works. So on the... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight column. In the eight column, column H, you're going to see this thing called account number. And you're going to notice the current account numbers that QuickBooks is using. You're also going to see on the second column on B, you're going to see the account names. Now, through this file, we really can't change the account names, but we can change the account numbers. You also really need to make sure that these are organized in ascending order based on liquidity using the standard balance sheet method. Basically what that means is we have bank accounts first, accounts receivable, other current asset, fixed asset, other asset, accounts payable, credit card, other current liability, long-term liability, equity, income, cost of goods sold, expense, other income, and other expense in that exact same order. Now, I wrote an article in my blog called Standard Chart of Account and Account Types. I'll go ahead and copy and paste this link in the description below so you can check it out. And this is basically a little quick cheat sheet that pretty much tells you more or less what the account number range should be based on the account type. So assets are going to be in the 1000s, liabilities on the 2000s, equity on the 3000s, income in the 4000s, cost of goods sold in the 5000s, and expenses are going to be on the 6000s. Then you can use the 7000s and the 8000s for other income and other expenses. You can actually scroll down in the article and there's a sample chart of accounts that gives you an idea more or less of what that would look like. So let's go back into an Excel spreadsheet. So that being said, I want to make sure that all my assets, which in this case, it's going to be bank, accounts receivable, other current asset, fixed asset, and other assets. I need to make sure that all of these start with ones. So I'm going to do something simple. I'm going to type here 1001 and then 1002. Then I'm going to select these two cells and then I'm going to click and drag down all the way to my last fixed asset. Now that's one way of doing it by just giving everything ones. But usually we work a little bit more logical. For example, we make the one zeros banks and then we make the one twos accounts receivable. So in this case, in the case of uh, this particular is the only accounts receivable we have, I'll make this one two zero one. So hopefully that makes sense. Then all my other current assets, maybe I'll make these one threes. So I'll do one three zero one, one three zero two, and then I'll click and drag these down all the way through my last other current asset. And then let's say my fixed assets are the one fours, one four zero one, one four zero two, and so forth. Now there's no set rule exactly on how you wanna number them. Again, the title of the video is fix your chart of accounts and that's really up to you on what fixing means. Now you also wanna pay close attention to sub accounts. Typically when you have sub accounts, 
you actually want those numbers to be part of the group in a logical way. So for example, I got these right here called prepaids. So I got my parent account prepaid and then I have prepaid insurance and prepaid taxes. So it doesn't make much sense for this to be 1303, 1304, 1305. In this particular case, maybe I can make my prepaid 1310 and then I'll make my first sub account 13 one one and my second sub account 13 one two again there's no set rule on how this works this is your preference and up to you i'm just using different examples so you can think about it when you're setting this up on your own okay let's go down to our fixed assets which are the 1400s okay that's good then let's look at our accounts payable so that should start with a two so i'm going to do two one zero one and then we have our credit card account. So for credit card accounts, we'll make them the 2200s. So we'll do 2201. And there's only one credit card account. And then I have my other current liabilities. Maybe we'll make this the 23s. So 2301, 2302, 23. Let's make this one 2310, because this is a parent account that has a couple of sub accounts. So we'll make this 2311, 2312. Two, three, one, three. Then we have our long-term liability. Maybe we can make that 2401. And then our equity accounts should all be threes. So for these, we'll make opening balance equity 3001. Retain earnings. Always do 3,000 for retain earnings. The capital account will make this one 3,100. And then we'll do 3,101 for the, each sub-account 3,102. 3103. Again, there's no set rule on how this works. This is just how I'm doing them at the moment. Okay, let's move down to income. We'll make these all the 4,000. So we'll do 4,001, 4,002, and then we'll select two and click and drag to our last income account. That's our last income account. Perfect. Then our cost to goods sold account. I'm going to use 5001, 5002. Click and drag this down all the way to this labor one that I have here that has a parent and some subs. By the way, that little column there tells you that these are sub accounts. That means that they're gonna be subcategories of the parent. So we'll make this one 5100, and then we'll do 5101, 5102, and we can click and drag this down to the last subcategory, perfect. And then we're down to expenses. These are now the expenses. So these are going to be the 6,000 series. So we'll do 6,001 and then we'll click and drag. Let's do 6,002 and then we'll click and drag all the way down. Expenses are typically a lot more than everything else. And then we'll look for our parent categories. So let's look for our first one. We got professional fees here. So maybe we'll make this one 6100 and then we'll do 6101, 6102. 6103 perfect let's look for other parent there it is wages so let's make this one 6200 and then 6201 6202 i know what you're thinking you know hey this doesn't seem to be much faster than doing one by one in quickbooks true maybe it takes about the same amount of time but it's much easier to think about them and visually kind of enjoy the process in Excel. So I actually find that once you do this a couple of times in Excel, it will be much, much faster. Okay, so let's do 6300 for this parent, 6301, 6302. Perfect, now we got insurance as another parent account. So 6400, 6401, 6402. And then we'll copy and drag that down all the way to my last subcategory which is this one. Then we got car and truck expense. Let's make that 6,500. And then we follow the exact same process, 6,502. Click and copy this down. Okay, now we're on to other income. So other incomes, we said those are gonna be the 7,000s. So we do 7,001, 7,002, 7,003. It looks like there is a subcategory here. So let's make this one. 7100 and 7101 and then we'll make this one 8100 and 81
0.01, perfect. And these uh, purchase orders, estimates, and sales orders, you don't need to mess with those. As a matter of fact, I actually delete those last three because that's not really part of your standard chart of accounts. And that's really it. That's all you have to do in Excel. So once you're done, you're gonna click on the save button, not save as, just straight save. And you're gonna close Excel. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna import this IAF file back into QuickBooks. So I'm gonna open up QuickBooks and I want, to, I want you to pay close attention to the chart of accounts here. I'm also gonna go ahead and open a profit and loss report at the same time. Uh, that way we can kind of see both things happening at the same time. So let me show both windows here. Okay, this is perfect. So we got our profit and loss on the left. We got our chart of accounts on the right. And I'm gonna import the new updated chart of accounts from Excel and you're gonna see both of these things update in real time. So we're gonna to go to the file menu, utilities, import IIF files. We select the file that we were working with in the desktop, click on open. We'll click okay. And boom, you're gonna see the profit and loss report beautifully set up with the 4,000s in income, 5,000s in cost of goods sold, 6,000s in expenses. You can open each of these subcategories and see everything organized in a very logical fashion. Same thing with the balance sheet accounts. Let's pull up a balance sheet real quick. And these are also organized in a very logical way. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in the chart of accounts, you can actually, let me maximize the chart of accounts. You can actually click on account, resort list, and okay. And this will reorganize them all by account number. But you can also manually force the ordering to be different. So if for whatever reason you wanted this work in progress utilities to be your last of your account, so you want this one to be under employee advances, you can actually click and drag by putting your cursor right there on that little tiny diamond that's to the left of the account number, that little tiny diamond and drag it down. So we're gonna click that, drag it down. You're gonna see that dashed line there letting you know that you're changing the order and then when you go back and pull up a balance sheet, you will notice that the, this work in progress utility is actually the very last line, even though it's not on the same numerical order as the other ones. So you have that choice. You can always go back and resort it or manually change the order in whichever way you want. Perfect. So as I mentioned earlier, this is kind of an advanced video. I hope you liked it. I hope it solved whatever issue you were trying to do definitely hit thumbs up for a like and add comments below if you were looking for something else or maybe you have a special request of another video that I should do. But if you really want to learn QuickBooks in depth uh, from beginning and sort of intermediate levels, go to quickbooksacademy.com and you're going to scroll down and look for learn QuickBooks desktop in three days. Click on that. Then you're going to click on sign up for this virtual course and you're gonna click on add coupon and type YouTube. If you use that YouTube coupon and click on apply, it should give you 10% off of whatever the price the, the video may be at the time. I set the price at the beginning of 2018 to $95. Used to be about $150, I'm testing pricing. So hopefully when you log in, it would be at the lowest available price uh, that I'm offering. But I can't guarantee exactly what the price will be. Now, after you enroll in the course, this is what it looks like. You log in and you're going to have multiple lectures. We're going to have day one, day two, day three. And I'm also adding some bonus material, which I'm calling day four and day five. And those are what I'm going to be adding along the way as I create more content. But day one, two, and three are the most important. If you click on any of these lessons here, you're going to have the video on the top. You're going to have some some notes in the bottom. You're gonna have a link to download a PDF manual of QuickBooks and you finish all the lessons and you should be able to be up and running with QuickBooks in no time. Again, thank you for watching this video. Hit like, subscribe to the channel, add comments below, and I help you learn QuickBooks.